Only after you've experienced the beauty of Africa can you begin to appreciate the problems that beset it. Malawi is one of the poorest countries in the continent. The name means flames, the rays of the sun dancing on Lake Malawi. But the poetic name of the country can't hide the undercurrent of concern for the future. It's not in the scenery, the people or their culture, that the poverty is to be found. The riches here are fabulous. But almost a century of colonial rule hindered any natural development, a fact which can be seen in the poverty of most African countries today. <coughs> this is the village of Kapatamoya, where the Capesini family are out working in their fields. The pattern here is much the same throughout Africa. 90% of Malawi's population of 6 million live in the country where they can support themselves. The women and children are vital if the family is to manage on an income of a few hundred dollars a year. Even though Malawi soil is fertile, its greatest natural asset, the yield is disappointingly low. There is water aplenty. The problem is to find clean water. Water is the cause of most sickness in Malawi. Sickness that can be fatal when malnutrition is the norm, not the exception. When Mrs. Capacini is not working in the fields, She's usually preparing food for her family. The staple diet here is nsima, or maize porridge. Maize is the principal cereal in Malawi. 80% of all cultivated land is put to maize production. This monotonous diet, day in, day out for many years, is one of the causes of an increasing public health problem. The Capisani family's only son is called Gift. After four girls and three babies that died, this is how they look on him, as a gift. Unlike his sisters, he will contribute to the family income and by tradition will be the one to look after his parents in their old age. The national dependency on maize is far too high. To increase the nutritional value of their diet, Mrs. Capacini gathers leaves from their kitchen garden. These and ground nuts will be used in the next meal. <laughs> A chat with the neighbours is the same everywhere, and so is non-stop radio. Though <laughs> so here it's more than just a musical background. Mrs. Capicini and her friends are listening to a programme about nutrition and child health. <laughs> These programs are produced by Malawi's Red Cross as part of the government's expanding national health program. The idea is to get the population to take an active part in the country's aim of health for all by the year 2000. In 1977, the League of the Red Cross in Geneva decided to give active support for the Red Cross in Malawi and for eight other countries in southern Africa. The first priority was the training of helpers for the under five clinics. Since 1980, 178 people have been trained at the Red Cross training centre here in Doha and the plan is for 180 a year from now on. People are also trained in first aid. They're of enormous help in the hundreds of villages around the country. You must have two things. And the first one is, have a part like this one. And then, 
place the pad on top of the cut and ask your victim to support the pad. Like that. Then get another bandage or anything that is clean near you and then tie like that. Life in Kapatamoya seems peaceful and idyllic. Happy children playing without a care in the world. But the need for help is great. In Malawi, one child in seven dies before the age of five. This year, Mr. Capacini can afford to build a new house. A good harvest has enabled him to buy the most essential hardware, like nails and wire, the only things that nature doesn't provide him with. But his future would be less uncertain if he knew that next year, too, he would be able to give his children food and shelter. Mrs. Capisani and her neighbors, like all mothers, worry and fret about their children. Most of them here in Malawi have lost at least one child before its fifth birthday. Mrs. Capisani has lost three. The under five clinics can help make sure she doesn't lose a fourth baby. <laughs> Mrs. Capicini knows that the mobile clinic is on its way. Today is the day when it visits her area. Gift is to have his monthly checkup. But Malawi is a large country, and there aren't as yet nearly enough under five clinics. So it does demand an effort from the mothers to make the crucial first visit. <laughs> Huh? Mrs. Capasini learned about the routine checkups from a radio program and took her baby along to be vaccinated. He hasn't been sick since, unlike some of the other babies in the village. And now she wants to learn more about how she can best look after her children. <laughs> Mothers come from all over the area with their under fives. They learn about the usual child illnesses and are taught basic hygiene, nutrition, child care and health care. The Malawi Aid de Memoir is a charming one. Catchy melodies that are easy to remember and often sung back in the villages. Once a month, up to 800 women visit the clinic. This large turnout is mostly due to the fact that they've seen or heard about the benefits that regular examination and treatment of their children can give. In the course of the antenatal checkups of pregnant women, the nurses try and explain that there are better and more hygienic ways of giving birth. And if there are any complications, they're referred to the nearest health center or district hospital. An important part of nutrition education is the cooking demonstration. The women are always amazed to learn how easy it is to prepare a more nutritious meal with fruit and vegetables from their own gardens. The under five clinics are becoming more and more popular. 
So popular, in fact, that the Ministry of Health personnel have a hard time coping with the increased workload. So the Red Cross volunteers are a very welcome addition to their staff. They're selected on a local basis, taken for training at the Red Cross Centre at Doha, then returned to their villages and attached to the local clinic. They help with the registration and teaching of the mothers and weighing and measuring of the children. Staff nurses check pregnant women and inoculate their children against the most common illnesses such as diphtheria, polio, measles and TB. The hospital at Doha is one of the 24 district hospitals in Malawi. Here too there are volunteer helpers. The need for them is not confined to the outlying rural areas. The hospital's medical officer, Mr. Sishinga, is more than pleased with the contribution of the volunteers. The Malawi Red Cross volunteers have done quite a lot and um, by that I mean they have reduced the amount of work which uh, were being loaded in the hospital when attending under five clinics so that um, the number of staff which he used to go to under five clinics um, have been uh, released because of the volunteers who have taken most of the work. Malawi has wealth beyond its fertile land. Malawi has water. One of the deepest lakes in the world, Lake Malawi covers more than one-fifth of the country. With over 300 kinds of fish, it is quite literally Malawi's protein bank the richest source of food after the maize fields. The Shire River flows south from the lake. It's here that the lake yields its abundant protein to the nets of the fishermen, a welcome and vital addition to their otherwise Spartan diet. These fishermen are members of the local Red Cross division. Twice a week they donate their earnings to the Red Cross, a contribution they might well have used themselves. The capital city of Lilongwe is a stark contrast to life in the villages. It is the new Malawi and a symbol of the future of Africa. It became the capital city in 1975. Modern architecture is evident everywhere and all government administration will be centered here in the geographical heart of the country. Malawi gained its independence in 1966 after 71 years as the British colony of Nyasaland. With this new capital city, Malawi has finally left behind the legacy of colonialism. In 1970, Dr. Kamuzu Benda was elected as president for life. Since then, Malawi has enjoyed a relatively strong political stability. One reason is that the village chiefs still play a large role in national affairs. The main central hospital here in Lilongwe is one of two in Malawi. They accept the specialist cases from the 24 district hospitals who take their patients from the health stations. 
Under the health stations are the grassroots of the health system, the under five clinics. The plan is to have one clinic for every 2,000 people. They're found throughout the health system, also here at the central hospital in Lalongwe. Already over a thousand under five clinics are in operation throughout Malawi, but the need is great. That figure must be doubled. This figure has been set as a goal by the government, and it can only be reached with help from Red Cross volunteers. There is only one doctor for every 40,000 people, so volunteer workers are indispensable if health for all is to be reached by the year 2000. Development is not the province of the big cities alone. In the villages, people do what they can to improve their lot. It takes hard work to reach a bare minimum of welfare. But it's an uphill fight just to maintain this condition, much less improve on it. Endemic disease and a generally low level of health hardly give the children the best chance of survival. With such a poor start in life, men only live an average of 40 years. In 1981, Mr. Capicini was 32, and in the same year, his wife turned 30. The women of Malawi live an average of 44 years. Things are thankfully changing for the better now, but there is still much to be done before the Capicini family can look forward to a better future. A better future goes hand in hand with better education. At the Red Cross training center, students receive their certificates with pride, and rightly so, because they will soon become an invaluable support to the country's development. 75% of the population are illiterate, so this piece of paper conveys respect. Mrs. Meyer is also a volunteer, working at the local hospital. Red Cross has given her a bicycle because she lives so far from work, and that is all the payment she gets. She's a volunteer. But Mrs. Meyer is satisfied with that. She considers her new knowledge payment enough. Using her knowledge has become for her a matter of pride. Blantyre, with its 250,000 people, is the largest and the oldest city. It's also the center of all commerce and transport. Malawi is landlocked, so everything must be brought in by rail or truck. The main exports are tobacco, tea, sugar and groundnuts. Though many ministries have moved to Lilongwe, the Malawi Red Cross headquarters is still here, though they too expect to move soon. The Malawi Red Cross was started in 1966. At that time, there was only one staff member, the General Secretary. Today, there are 11. The society comprises 27 divisions with over 5,000 members. Typical of the structure of the health system in Malawi, the headquarters building houses its own under five clinic, the basis of the entire Malawi health effort. Five million dollars will be needed between 1980 and 83 to support the Red Cross health projects in Malawi and eight other African countries. This money will be sought from the Scandinavian countries, among others, but the Malawi Red Cross has committed itself to raising part of the funds and will eventually take over most of the financing. Continued economic support will be used to hire new staff for training courses, information activities, and to start and operate more under five clinics. Finally, it's important to continue funding a league delegate, paid for in this case by Danish Red Cross, so that he can advise the society on its development. But to start with where they managed to the acting General Secretary of Malawi Red Cross, John Undulu, 
is on his way with the league delegate to meet a local division. They will discuss setting up a blood donor system, a new activity of the National Society. As a starting sum of money for the division itself. Well, I, I think we've got to explain to the division that... Uh, Harold Masterson is the league delegate funded by Danish Red Cross. His job is to ensure an efficient administration and coordination of the health program, but more important, to act as an advisor and consultant. Local hospitals and, and uh, try to recruit donors within the divisions, Red Cross members who, be, uh, who become blood donors. That's precisely right. In fact, when we get to, uh, to Cholo and we meet the uh, divisional officers there, we should definitely talk about this blood donation, especially the role that the division can play in the promoting of the blood donor. I don't know. The first thing that will be needed is... The prime objective is to make the Malawi Red Cross an independent society. Great advances have been made, but not without problems. Problems which will be overcome in the next few years. Well, uh, I think some of the problems are common to many African countries. I suppose in terms of the society itself, it's uh, the communication problem could be mentioned, that is communication between divisions and, uh, and headquarters, uh, inculcating the idea that, uh, that a large percentage of funding will have eventually to come from Malawi itself, uh, building up some kind of structure which can mean that funds will come from within the country itself in years when uh, in the years when Danish funding is no longer there. I think uh, the future of Malawi Red Cross is fairly bright. I think we have got some people working in the society now who have uh, a good grasp of what uh, Red Cross is really all about. Uh, I think if we can overcome the problem of internal funding and we have some uh, ideas now as to how we can do this, then I, then I think uh, Malawi Red Cross has got quite a bright future. Every evening the girls meet here at the well to gossip and fill their buckets one last time before sunset. The villagers in Kapatamoya have a right to clean water and better health care. If it is denied them, only 86 out of every 100 can expect to survive their first few years. In our countries, 99 out of 100 survive, and we live to be 70 on average. This is almost twice their life expectancy. We have vast resources of knowledge in the fields of health and nutrition. This knowledge must be used here among the villages of Kapetamoya. And the Red Cross has made a start. The general standard of health in a country determines the level of its development. It is possible for people in Africa to live as long and as full a life as ours, but only if we are willing to share our wealth and our knowledge. We hold the key to the future happiness of the Capiseni family and thousands of others like them. Part of that happiness is something we take for granted, the gift of good health and long life, a life almost twice as long as theirs. <laughs> we can decide whether the Capiseni children and their children must make do with half a lifetime. We have the knowledge, health and wealth to do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> But do we also have the will to achieve the goal which should be a basic right for these children? Health for all by the year 2000. <laughs>